Welcome into the show. Uh, essentially, look at that uh, that yield story, lo lowering the the odds, uh, both in terms of yields lower, but also the the bets on twice more by the Fed this year seem pretty distant now, do they not? Good afternoon, Carson. Thanks for having me. That's right. We are seeing the uh, the expectation of this June hike pretty much fully priced in. It's at 90 percent. But the real the real um, interesting thing here would be to see if there are another one or two hikes after that. And that's mm -hmm. really what we'll be listening to on the 14th mm -hmm. to find out where we go from here. Uh, Goldman Sachs on Friday actually uh, priced. They had an expectation for a September hike, and they've actually now pushed that back and priced that in for December. So it seems to be that this expectation is is waning a bit, and mm. it, this it, it seems to be it's going to be either pushed out to next year, mm. if at all. Yeah, the, the call from BK Asset Management is that they won't provide strong guidance on future tightening following the June decision. Are you hearing differently? Yeah, I, I actually do agree with that, and I, I think the reason for that is that they'll just wait and see what what happens from here. Mm -hmm. uh, they've very much talked up this June um, this June rate hike, and mm -hmm. prior to that, the data had actually been quite strong. Mm -hmm. It's only really been the last few months or so that we have had some negative prints come through, mm -hmm. and I, that seems to be an ongoing trend. So I think they will pull back a bit and, and just wait to see what the, those further. Um, prints are data prints are to then you know come to market and, and make a statement about uh, the, the future of it. The dollar though looks decidedly unloved because let's face it, in order to keep the optimism in play, you really have to have progress on tax cuts and fiscal spending, neither of which seem likely this side of Christmas. Yeah, that's right. I, I think um, Trump certainly did talk up his, his budget with the tax cuts and the infrastructure spend, uh, but he's been a bit distracted with some other, you know, political uncertainty uh, and, and the likes of what uh, is going on over with the uh, Comey um, meeting uh, s Congress um, and the, the likes of that. And so the expectation actually is that all of those, um, the, the core infrastructure spend and all that will be pushed out until 2018. And so that's really been priced out of the market now. And we seeing that come through in, in yields. Yeah, well, looking at the 10-year UST and then a comparison with the uh, Australian equivalent, the 18-bit differential, uh, how much more of a tightening story might we expect even post RBA this week? Yeah, I, I think there's another uh, another good, you know, up to five basis points to go in that in, in this week. Mm -hmm. And then whatever we'll see next week come through with uh, the rate hike expected out of the Fed on, on the 14th. So I think with the RBA, uh, if anything, there's a 20 per cent chance uh, mm -hmm. priced in for a, a rate cut from mm -hmm. the RBA later this year. And then this rate hike from the, uh, the out of the Fed mm -hmm. next week, I think we will see that um, a press even tighter again over the next coming week. Yeah, I was going to say, is, is that, if anything, a misprice, the 20 per cent, given that we uh, could well get a negative GDP print come Wednesday? So might we perhaps be bracing for more like a 45 per cent uh, move on perhaps further easing? Yeah, Carson, I think you're actually really right there. Mm. Uh, this, it, prior to, let's say, a couple of weeks ago, that was actually priced in at 10%. It's only recently gone to 20%. Mm. But I do think there is, um, I think that will increase the chances of that. I think mm. with the um, the fall in house prices, that we've seen a first couple of prints come through. Um, May was the first month that that had decreased in 18 months. And I think now that uh, pricing, uh, the house pricing seems to be cooling. In Sydney in particular, it was down one. 0.3%. I think it now does give a bit of leeway for the RBA to cut where previously we hadn't seen that. Tactically, do they judge it though to be transitory and therefore they might just well sit on their hands till Q2, say let's get validation of this and not jump the gun? Uh, you know, in, in other words, the old argument of being ahead of the curve or being passive but ready to be there for the cleanup. Yeah, I think you're right there. The RBA is certainly does like to wait and see that it's generally has been their stance in a lot of situations and they do like to see a lot of hard data come through uh, before making any decisions. I think they're um, one um, central bank that certainly doesn't want to have to make a decision and then go back on it like some others have in New Zealand in particular. So I think they definitely will wait to see some more prints, uh, as you mentioned, D GDP that's due out, uh, which mm -hmm. is expected to be quite weak. So I think they will wait for to get a fuller picture before they really do make any um, big decisions. Jessica, thank you as always. Have a good week. Lovely. Thanks, right. Carson. All the best. Jessica Russett live at FIG for